Why leaving so soon? Why don't you let me handle this one, okay? Little boy, what's your name? I'm Emilio. Uh, I don't have anything for you. I'm afraid I have to disagree, Emilio. You see, you have a talent that ne neither I nor my partner possesses. A talent that would, we will be very much needing tomorrow. I'm sorry, but I don't get it. I understand that you have a sick friend. How did you... You are the one, you are out here working hard to make her better. Yes, I... And if you agree to help Boss Cortez out, you may never have to beg like a poor boy again. And the medical care for your friend will be paid in full. How does that sound, Emilio? But what makes me so special? I'm a very important man, Emilio. And what it looks like, and like many important men, I offer important services. It just so happens that two groups of Americans are coming to buy our office tomorrow to buy my product. English speaking Americans. Are you following me, Emilio? You're a smart boy, aren't you? So if I help you with your sales, you will pay for my friend's trips to the clinic. That and more, boy. Find your way to 2048A, Avenida, Avenida, before 6 o'clock tomorrow, without forgetting how to communicate with the pathetic Americans. Can we have a deal? I'll be there, senor. Boss Cortez. Oh, knock on the side door. Fabian snoring will probably down, drown out all the noises from the back. Boss Cortez tows Fabian away as if he were a child. Emilio, shocked with the offer he has just received, watches as the men disappear into the thinned evening crowd of the marketplace before ecstatically running off stage to begin his journey home as lights fade for, set, for a set transition. Scene 3. Lights come up as Emilio spots Rosa in the same location against the building and runs to her. Rosa, you made it. You're safe. He kneels on the ground beside Rosa. You won't guess what happened. Holds out, he holds out the $5 bill from the female tourist. We made almost 100 lampiras for you today. That's great, Emilio. But 100 lampiras won't be enough to make me well again. No, Rosa, listen. After a woman gave me this, two men told me that if I help them talk to English-speaking Americans, then they're going to pay you to get better all the way. Emilio, please calm down. Are you sure this really happened? Your imagination has always been stronger than mine. No, Rosa, really. They want me to help sell things starting tomorrow morning, early. Sell things? Emilio, they're probably trafficking drugs. I don't care. I want you better. Besides, it'll be awesome, just like when we do English. All I ask is that you're safe. Save yourself before worrying about saving me. This one guy said that to me today, too. Let's sleep. Have a good day tomorrow, okay? And keep your glasses on. You look good like that. That is not something I can promise. But I always try. Sleep well, Emilio. Rosa? Yes? I think we should stay best friends, no matter what. Emilio places the money he has earned into the pages of the translation dictionary. You know I can't promise that either, Emilio. Forever is a long time. Emilio leans against Rosa and closes his eyes. You'll always be my best friend. The lights fade for another set transition. Scene 4. Emilio knocks on the side door of what appears to be a refurbished, refurbished home with tin siding and roofing. Emilio is granted entrance by Boss Cortez. Emilio, my boy! Glad to see you made such a wise decision. My friend and I are excited for her to get better, so thanks. But of course. Anything for such an admiral boy with such skills as valuable as yours. Our American guests and I have been patiently awaiting your arrival. I hope you're ready to impress them with these negotiations. Emilio is led into another room where sales are to take place. The room is surprisingly well lit by a single fixture precariously hung from the ceiling. The primary wall has multiple shelves stacked with jars and bags of dried plant material. One especially anxious-looking customer stands in front of a line wrapped around a small kitchen table in the center of the room. Fabian stands in the corner with a clipboard to record the day's sales. Hello. Why well, aren't you something? I'm in a better mood already. I'll tell you what. You tell Mr. Cortez over there, over here, that he can name his price, and I'll think about paying. Boss Cortez, he says he feels good and wants your price. It's not correct. Emilio, you may just be a better investment than I thought. These fussy Americans never let us speak first. Why don't you ask him how much he wants? 
How much, sir? I'm assuming Mr. Cortez is equipped to hook me up, and my boy hook me and my boys up with a couple of kilos of bandit. Am I right? He wants two key. Baby, you're the man. Get him his fix, Emilio. Get him his fix. Emilio, how about you tell the nice man he owes Boss Cortez 38 lempira? 38,000 lempira, sir. And how, and how much for you as part of the deal? Uh, how much for you as part of the deal? What are you waiting for, boy? You know what I said. Boss Cortez, he wants to know how much I cost. <laughs> doesn't he know that how doesn't he know how much money my little worker is going to make today? Absolutely not. Besides, Emilio, we care for you for your well-being far too much to let that happen. He says there's no price, sir. Not even for a hundred thousand in beer? Emilio, my boy, tell the nice man that he may stay after he may stay after the line is through to discuss matters matters further. But boss, don't challenge me, boy. Stay after. That's better. Glad I'm working with a businessman. Boss Cortez turns to Fabian. Fabian begins fervently scribbling notes on his clipboard. Emilio realizes the danger of his situation and runs from the office. Emilio exits stage as the American customer, followed by Fabian, yells, both yell after him. The American customer runs off stage in Emilio's direction as lights dim for another set transition. Act 3, Scene 6. Emilio, thinking he had lost the American customer a while back, appears exhaustedly slowing down on the edge of the set of the apartment complex and Rosa. The sound of a vehicle screeching to a halt occurs before the American customer appears behind Emilio and forcefully pushes him to the ground. Good bruh, little shit! Now see how, how valuable you are now! Aggressively, he punches Emilio's face and body multiple times and delivers a final kick to Emilio's ribs. Pathetic! He spits on him and leaves Emilio's motionless body in a cloud of street dust. He exits the scene and a car driving off occur uh, the sound of a car driving off is played. Rain falls as Emilio crawls back to Rosa. He collapses into her lap with gashes and bruises covering his body while tears begin to stream ac across his scraped cheeks. I, I really tried, Rosa. Really, really hard. And I only let you down. Emilio, how many times must I tell you that you have never let me down? But I really did this time. You're still sick and it's all my fault. I know I don't look well, but I've been feeling better lately. Really? And it's not your fault that I got sick in the first place. Pull yourself together, please. I hate to see you torn up over me. Emilio sits up and huddles next to Rosa, with knees pulled into his chest, just in time to hide his injuries from Mrs. Calies, who approaches with a blanket. Hello, you must be Emilio. And Liliana's mother. Mrs. Calies? I thought, I thought that, uh, I saw that you were still out here in the rain. Thought you could use this. Emilio accepts the blanket and cautiously wraps it first around Rosa, then himself. Thanks, Mrs. Calliens. It's really warm. Let me know if you need anything, Emilio. Liliana and I'll be upstairs all night. Mrs. Calliens returns to her apartment, and several hours pass before she appears downstairs again, placing her hand on Emilio's shoulder to wake him in a violent thunderstorm. Emilio, Liliana asked me to invite you inside. It's not safe for you out here anymore. But Emilio, you can't bring your friend. Liliana begged me to let you, but there's just not room for her here. I'm not going to leave Rosa on a night like this. Emilio, please come inside. You can see your friend in the morning. She'll stay warm with the blanket. Can I talk to her for a minute? Of course, honey. Take as long as you need. Liliana will be upstairs hoping for you to join us. Mrs. Calia's exits, leaving Emilia and Rosa to talk. 